Have you ever wondered how the railway network, the lifeline of India, came into existence and what role it played during the colonial era? Let's take a journey back in time to the mid-19th century. The year was 1853, an era of colonial rule, when the British introduced railways to the Indian subcontinent. The primary objective was straightforward, to facilitate the transportation of goods, particularly raw materials like cotton and coal, from the interiors of India to the ports for export. Picture this, a steam engine, billowing clouds of smoke, chugging along the tracks. This was the first train in India, running a stretch of 34 kilometers between Bombay, now Mumbai and Thane. A momentous occasion, it signaled the dawn of a new era, one that would transform India in ways unimaginable. At the helm of this transformation was the East India Company. They envisioned the railways not just as a means of transportation, but as a tool of colonial power, a tool to control and administer the vast territories of India more effectively, to quell uprisings, to move troops swiftly. The railways in their eyes were more than mere iron tracks and steam engines. They were arteries, pumping the lifeblood of the empire, carrying not just goods but also ideas, cultures and people across the length and breadth of the nation. Yet, it wasn't just about control and power. The East India Company also saw the potential for economic growth. The railways could open up new markets, foster trade and stimulate the economy. They envisioned a network that would bind the country together, a network that would become the backbone of the nation. And so, the first seed of the Indian railways was sown, not out of a desire to connect people, but from a need to consolidate power, control resources and facilitate trade. The railways were a colonial project, intricately woven into the fabric of British imperialism. Thus, the origin of the Indian railways was deeply rooted in the needs of colonial power. But as we'll see in our upcoming scenes, the railways would evolve, influencing society, politics and the very idea of India itself. After the first successful train journey, there was no looking back. The railway network started expanding rapidly. This was a period of vigorous growth, as the iron veins of the railway spread across the length and breadth of India. By the year 1880, the network had grown to an impressive 14,500 kilometers, bridging distances, connecting people and facilitating trade like never before. Two major rail companies led this expansion. The Great Indian Peninsula Railway, or GIPR, and the East Indian Railway, known as EIR. The GIPR, starting from Bombay, spread its network towards the south and east of India. On the other hand, the EIR, originating from Calcutta, extended its reach towards the north and west. Together, these two rail giants crisscrossed the subcontinent, weaving a complex web of connections that transformed the face of India. But let's not forget, behind this rapid expansion was not just the aim of connecting a nation. There were also economic interests at play. The British Empire, which ruled India during this period, saw the railways as a golden goose. It was an efficient way to transport goods, particularly raw materials like cotton and coal, from the interiors of India to the ports for export to Britain. The railways also facilitated the import of British manufactured goods into India, opening up a vast market for British industry. In essence, the railways became the arteries of the British colonial economy, pumping wealth from the heart of India to the coffers of the British Empire. By the end of the 19th century, the Indian railways had grown into a vast and intricate network. It was more than just a means of transportation. It was a symbol of the industrial age, a testament to human ingenuity and a tool of economic exploitation. But most importantly, it was the backbone of the British colonial economy. By the end of the 19th century, the Indian railways had become the backbone of the British colonial economy. The railways didn't just change the economic landscape, they also had a profound impact on Indian society. The advent of railways acted as a catalyst in the unification of India, in the vast and diverse subcontinent, where geographical barriers had often nurtured distinct regional identities. The railway lines served as a unifying thread. They brought people closer, enabling them to travel across the length and breadth of the country, fostering a sense of unity. For the first time, people from the remotest corners of the country could undertake long journeys with relative ease, encountering new landscapes, languages and cultures along the way. 
The railways were also instrumental in the spread of ideas and culture. Books, newspapers and other forms of print media could now reach far and wide, fostering intellectual exchange. This played a significant role in the spread of nationalism as ideas of freedom, equality and fraternity could now reach the masses, fueling the struggle for independence. But the impact of railways wasn't just limited to the intellectual sphere. It brought about tangible changes in the social structure as well. With the establishment of railway lines, there rose a new working class, the railway workers. They were a diverse group, drawn from various regions and social strata, working together in close quarters, breaking down traditional social barriers. This created a unique social milieu, where interactions were not governed by rigid caste norms, but by the shared experience of labor. Furthermore, the railways also had a profound impact on urban development. Many of today's bustling cities owe their growth to the railways. They brought with them a wave of urbanization, as towns sprouted around railway stations, growing into thriving cities. The railways thus played a pivotal role in shaping modern Indian society. From fostering unity and spreading ideas to triggering social changes and driving urban development, the impact of railways was far-reaching and transformative. They were more than just a means of transport. They were the veins and arteries that connected the heart of India to its farthest reaches, shaping its socio-cultural landscape in the process. While railways brought numerous benefits, they were also seen as a tool of oppression. Let's take a moment to delve into the darker side of the colonial railways. The British colonial government used railways as a strategic tool for military purposes. These iron arteries of the empire allowed for rapid troop mobilization, fortifying British control over the vast Indian subcontinent. During times of unrest and revolt, trains became instrumental in swiftly suppressing these uprisings, effectively using the railways as a means to maintain power and control. A striking disparity existed in the fare system of the railways. Europeans, who were a tiny fraction of the passengers, enjoyed spacious, well-appointed compartments at relatively low fares. In contrast, the vast majority of Indians who formed the backbone of the railway's passenger traffic were crammed into overcrowded carriages and charged higher per mile rates. This blatant discrimination served as a stark reminder of the unequal power dynamics of the colonial era. Let's now revisit the famines of the late 19th century. The colonial government's focus on railways was so intense that it diverted crucial resources from other vital infrastructure projects, particularly irrigation. As a result, when drought struck, the Indian agrarian economy was left exposed, leading to catastrophic famines. The railways, ironically, were then used to transport grains, but often these measures were too little, too late. Millions perished in these famines, casting a long, dark shadow over the gleaming rails of progress. So while railways revolutionized communication and transportation and served as catalysts for economic growth, they were not without their drawbacks. They were used to reinforce colonial power, perpetuate discriminatory practices, and their prioritization sometimes led to tragic consequences. Railways, in many ways, were a double-edged sword for the Indian populace. The impact of railways on India is undeniable. But how do we evaluate their legacy? Post-independence, the rail network continued to expand, reaching even the most remote corners of the country. As India grew, so did its railways, becoming an integral part of the nation's economic framework. Today, the Indian Railways is not just a transport system, but a symbol of national unity and progress, connecting millions of people across diverse geographical and cultural landscapes. It's hard to imagine India's economy without the railways. The railways serve as the backbone of freight transportation, carrying everything from coal to cars and contributing significantly to the country's GDP. They provide affordable and accessible means of transport to millions, creating a ripple effect on other sectors like tourism, hospitality and local businesses. But the influence of railways extends beyond the economy. They have become an inseparable part of India's social and cultural fabric. Train journeys in India are more than just a means of getting from point A to point B. They are a shared experience, a microcosm of the country's diversity, where people from different walks of life come together. The railways have also found their way into Indian literature, films and music, reflecting the deep-rooted connection between the people and the trains. However, the legacy of Indian railways is not without its challenges. 
Infrastructure, safety, modernization, and financial sustainability are key issues that need to be addressed. On the brighter side, there is an ongoing commitment to transform Indian railways into a world-class transport system. From high-speed trains to digitalization, the future is full of exciting possibilities. From a tool of colonial power to the lifeline of a nation, the journey of Indian railways is a testament to India's resilience and growth. As we navigate through the 21st century, the railways will continue to play a pivotal role in shaping India's destiny, carrying forward its legacy of connecting a nation.